Hello, everyone. Uh, this is hi. This is Dennis Kelly from Boynet. Hey, Dennis. I've hi. got uh, Paul and Amanda in the room right now. We're just. I think a couple other people are joining us here in a minute. Great, great. We've got a uh, large group here joining us today, and uh, I just want to make sure everybody can hear me well. Yeah. Yep. Great. Sounds good. great. I'm uh, I'm still recovering from a little bit of a uh, head and chest cold, so if my voice breaks up uh, during the webinar, uh, I, I'm not uh, a teenager who is uh, having his voice change. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, well, why don't we get started? I'm sure folks will be joining us uh, as we um, proceed. Uh, so, um, that's me, uh, the guy with the funny shadows behind his head. Um, my name is uh, Dennis Kelly, and uh, I'm the CEO here at BoyNet. Uh, we're going to be talking today about landing pages and, and why they are so important for direct mail campaigns. Uh, you've, we've got uh, some different ways of uh, entering questions. Uh, you can uh, tweet to hashtag landing page questions, uh, or you can use the chat panel in the fuse box. And uh, so we'll be taking questions uh, at the end. Uh, if we have time, we'll get through a couple of questions. Uh, and, of course, you can always reach out to us at any time to uh, uh, talk further in detail on any of these concepts we discussed today. So uh, for the agenda, uh, the first thing we're going to cover is, is really how direct mail, the idea of online research, and Google have all become very related in the last couple of years. Secondly, we're going to talk about how landing pages can solve some of the issues that Google creates for direct mailers. And then we're going to get into some examples. We've got some pretty interesting case studies uh, that have been submitted, and we can... Um, uh, run through them and, and talk about some of the pros and cons of different ways of uh, integrating landing pages with direct mail campaigns. So the, the, the first thing that we want to talk about is really that uh, uh, the relationship between offline campaigns and online behavior has become increasingly important. Among the many new habits that fast and inexpensive internet and search engines have created is the idea that before consumers make decisions, they go online to do research. And why not? Within a few keystrokes or finger swipes, consumers have easy access to everything they need to help them make a decision, including price and product comparison information. They want to know if they're getting a fair price. Uh, they can get detailed product or service information like spec sheets, videos, books, white papers, case studies, and on and on. And finally, they get reviews from both professional sources as well as fellow consumers. Um, interestingly, uh, some new research has shown that the higher the price of the product, the higher the percentage of consumers who go online to research decisions. Uh, GE Capital Retail Bank recently discovered that products with a price point of $116 I don't know why they chose 116 rather than 115, but they did, uh, has twice as many online researchers as lower-priced products. So if you think about that, think about what it means for things like auto purchases or financial services or nonprofit donations or college education, says the parent of two teenagers. Um, in order to get all of this, consumers have figured out that they just need to type in Google.com and a few words describing their interests. Google has become the default free, quote unquote, product and service researcher for the world, uh, except in China, interestingly, uh, where China has developed their own search engines. When it comes to search, and more importantly, when it comes to online research, Consumers around the world have come to rely on Google to provide them with information they're looking for in ways that are easy to access and understand. As a near monopoly on the starting point of the activity that just about every consumer is doing, 
Google has the power to make or break your success. More and more consumers are hopping online, whether they're at home, at work, walking around on the streets, and they check things out before they buy. This is happening before people pick up the phone or before to people respond to any type of offer from a brand. Direct mail recipients are no different. As they sort through what the postman has brought them, their eyes catch an interesting headline, offer a call to action, and they think, hey, I'm going to check this out further online. So Google's out there. What is your strategy? We've established that direct marketing campaigns target, drive your targets online to do research prior to taking action. Many of them will use search. We've also established that Google's a dominant player in search. In formulating a strategy on how to maximize the effectiveness of your campaign, the next logical questions to ask are, first, what does Google really care about? And since everybody's using their free search, there must be more to the story than just what they're showing us. Secondly, what happens when consumers use Google to do research, when I send a direct mail campaign? And then finally, what happens to my consumers after they do you Google, use Google to do the research? So, what does Google really care about? They care about their AdWords product. Google is a spectacularly successful business that almost entirely depends on selling ads to search users. While they generate headlines for things like self-driving cars and Google Glasses and all sorts of other geeky projects, AdWords is really their business. The Google AdWords product is their search engine profit engine. It reinvented the online search business in the early 2000s and has achieved the dominant status in online advertising. AdWords let businesses and organizations bid on keywords that are associated with searches, and it places ads that are designed to get consumers to click on them when they express interest in a topic with those keywords. As you can see, it's a nice little business that kicked off about $13 billion in profit last year. It has a nice little growth rate of about 31% annually. I wish we all had problems like Google has. <laughs> so what happens when consumers research using Google, including your direct mail targets? You grab them with a clever headline, they head over to Google. Here's an example of a simple online search for donations to AIDS. Perhaps this user's gotten a direct mail piece from a nonprofit soliciting a donation. They thought they'd go online to do some research before deciding what to do. Why not? It's free, it's comprehensive, it's easy, and it's fast. As you might expect, when consumers come to Google to use their free search engine, Google has other plans. They want to get paid. The way they get paid is through AdWords campaigns. Each of the items in the red box Boxes are ads that Google has strategically placed for maximum impact. The ads are designed to make consumers click to see what content is behind the solicitation. What is Google doing to your direct mail campaigns? While H. Ross Perot famously described the giant sucking sound of jobs leaving America because of NAFTA in 1992, I think a better image for the effect of Google AdWords on your campaign is that of a second. Google is selling ads to the eyeballs that you've driven to them with your direct mail or other offers campaign. These ads are designed to distract your clients from whatever their original intent was in going online to do research. Once your clients click on an ad, you risk losing them to competitors, who are trying to entice people to spend their, their dollars with them instead of you. In this case, the nonprofit who set out the direct mail campaigns to generate donations for AIDS is having its hard-earned leads being siphoned by organizations like UNICEF, an AIDS orphan organization, Heifer.org, Goodwill, a find AIDS charity company, 
an AIDS research organization, and the Elton John Foundation. All of them are great causes, and all of them are siphoning off interest in the campaign. Discussed how consumers are increasingly using Google to make research decisions prior to responding to any call to action in any campaign, including direct mail. We've discussed how Google is generating billions in profits from their AdWords product that is designed to distract your campaign targets from their original intent in learning more about the offer that you've spent your hard-earned money putting in front of them with your mouthpiece. You can't pretend this isn't happening. Great businesses develop strategies to deal with reality. While Google may be eventually slayed by a new competitor, it probably won't be one of the webinar today that does it. Their cash hoard of roughly $55 billion will ensure that they will be a player for a long time. So what's a direct mail marketer supposed to do? Well, I'm no martial arts expert, there's much to be learned from some of the fees that have evolved over the years. In this case, when an overwhelming force is being applied to a marketplace, an economic battleground of, of sorts, you need to perform a little bit of jujitsu. And uh, since we're all marketers, we really want to give consumers what they want. But what we need to do is direct them to a safe spot away from Google and your competitors to dig in further, to quench their thirst, to use online resources to learn more about the offers you're putting in front of them. This can be done in the creative of your direct mail piece, as well as within Google AdWord campaigns themselves. So we've got really two things that we wanted you guys to come away with. The best strategy is to redirect people and then a secondary strategy is to build an AdWords campaign that complements what you're doing. The so landing pages and microsites, which are basically larger versions of landing pages, are the safe places for consumers to go online. Good landing pages are opportunities for marketers to give consumers a place to go where they can learn more, compare and contrast, without being distracted by competitors. Best option is to set up really good landing pages and embed them in your direct mail. Tell the consumers exactly where to go online to learn more. Google and their AdWords product off by redirecting consumers' energy to your landing page rather than the wild west of a Google search result page. The other thing to do is set up your own AdWords account and link your pages to the direct mail campaign. Your campaign can then own some of that real estate that Google is selling to your competitors. So the best strategy, as we said, is to point them in the right direction. When you prominently feature a URL and or a QR code in your headline, you end up with a much different behavior than if you leave it blank. If you leave it blank, you're going to create a vacuum that Google will fill, as they always do. So there's three simple steps to creating an embedded URL. Uh, and, and this will create an action that will take somebody to a safe place that you've designed to give them everything they need. The first step is to set up what we call a friendly URL. And that's a URL that's easy to read, easy to type in, easy to understand. And a lot of times it can be backed up with a, a vanity domain that is related to the actual name of your campaign. A lot of times also you can bring in personalization features into URL. In this case, you see Kathy-Smith. Step two is to set up a landing page that matches the creative of your direct mail piece. There's a concept called message match that is very important. Folks in the online world have figured out uh, through all of the work they've done with Google that when a landing page has keywords and creative and color that matches the thing that drove them there, you end up with a much higher percentage of people that actually convert. 
And so keeping that consistency between the offline and the online is really important. The last step is you've got a very simple process with a lot of software that's out there where you can download a file with all the URLs and all the QRs, send it off to your variable print, equip printer, and they can produce your mail piece. Uh, they've been doing it for years. It's a very simple process. The secondary strategy, as we talked about, is, is to set up an AdWords campaign for your direct mail campaign. This is a pretty simple process. Google's made it very easy. Your account set up is free. They've got tons of resources that can walk you through how to do it. The important thing is that you bid on keywords that are going to be associated with the type of thing that you're selling or the type of offer that you're making. You can link those keywords then to landing pages that use those keywords and keeping that consistency and that message match. And when you do that, you end up with many more people that will. So this is really your strategy. If you can't redirect them, your, your fallback strategy is to, is to get in there and mix it up with all your competitors. So what makes a good landing page? Landing pages are designed with a single purpose, conversion. By focusing their intent on exactly the goals, landing pages deliver better results than what we would call normal landing pages. When we say designed with a purpose, we mean first, that all of the content and navigation not needed to achieve the conversion is stripped away. All the images, all the links, buttons, and everything else. The headline of the page has to be very simple, clear, and to the point. If a subheadline is used, it builds upon the headline with simple, clear language describing the product or service offer. There's a single call to action on a landing page. By limiting the choices of, an act of actions that a user can take, you are purposely driving them to accomplish the one task you've set out to do, convert them. That call to action is usually the focal point of the design of the page. The layout, the use of white space, the coloring choices should all be driving eyes to focus on the call to action. The call to action will often be expressed in a button that requires the user to click. This button needs to be fully designed with color, size, font, and word choice being thought through to attract the eye and convince the user to take the desired action. The primary message of a good landing page will match that message that drove the user to the page. Again, message match is really important. It doesn't matter if the user got to the page via Google search, an email message, or a direct mail campaign. The messaging needs to be consistent or you will lose a high percentage of your potential targets when they arrive. Finally, mobile is becoming increasingly important in everything uh, in marketing, as we all know, but especially as it relates to landing pages. The tablets are being used for more and more purposes. Landing pages are designed for mobile. They convert mobile traffic at a much higher rate than non-mobile landing pages. If you think about your own experiences, if you've had to zoom, scroll around, pinch, and do a lot of work, you're much more likely to click out and keep moving. Research backs up the obvious here. Many more people convert on pages that are optimized for the device being used. There's a new technology that's available in the most recent software that's out in the marketplace called Responsive Design. And what it allows a marketer to do is through point-and-click interfaces to create landing pages that will automatically scale up and scale down for desktops, tablets, or phones. Finally, your home page is not a landing page. Please don't use it as a landing page. Often, uh, direct mailers and others in the offline marketing world assume that because a brand has a home page, people will just respond to an offer by going to that home page and getting what they need. This is not the case. The home page is a wonderful portal to many things, and it rightly has a huge time and effort put into it. 
to ensure that it accomplishes its many tasks. What this example points out is that it just can't keep up with marketing. Marketing campaigns come and go quickly. They are, by definition, limited time efforts. Home pages really struggle with message, message match, the ability of a marketing effort to line up with the messaging that originated the viewing of the page. Marketers have learned that by building landing pages with the sole purpose of acknowledging and building upon the messaging that prompted the consumer to act, conversion rates skyrocket. So we'll get into now some case studies uh, that, that we've uh, had submitted to us and uh, have been sent to us. Uh, so this is a, uh, the first example is from Bose. And this was an offer that was actually sent to me uh, directly. Uh, as you can see, uh, this is a, a copy of the mailer that was sent. It was a triple folded letter. And you can see that they are offering a 90-day risk-free edition. And that's about it. I really don't know what to do here. Uh, I need to keep unfolding this triple folded letter to find out what I need to do. When I get to the second fold, I get this form, <coughs> a couple of black and white pictures. Do the fine folks at Bose think that in 2014 that I'm really going to go find a pen, fill out a form with tiny spaces, and put something back in the mail as the way that I respond to something? There's no mention anywhere of where to go on the web to learn more or to respond to the offer or to do anything else. For me and for many people, this is the point where the paper meets the bottom of my garbage can. But wait, maybe I'll go online to do some research first. So I go to my friends at Google and I type in best home speakers as my search phrase. Bose does show up over on the right-hand side. They set up a Google AdWords campaign, and they've listed two different ads for the key keyword phrase, best home speakers. Unfortunately for Google, or for Bose, my eyes are immediately drawn to the 2013 Speaker of the Year from orbaudio.com, or the one below that, the best budget home theater speakers. And then over on the right-hand side, right underneath Bose, top 10 home speakers. So this is not what I would call a safe place or a safe space for Bose, nor is it a safe space for a Bose direct mail recipient. I'm getting distracted all over the place. I'm looking at pictures of things that have nothing to do with Bose. I'm getting solicitations for the 2013 Speaker of the Year. This is a disaster for Bose. I'm going to sign down here. Finally, I do get to the third fold of the letter that was sent to me. There's a little bit more there. I scan to the bottom of the page, and I can find a URL to go to. It's in black and white to save a little money. The font is smaller than the 800 number, which is okay, but a, basically a futile exercise since most people are going to go online to do the research. If I do go to that landing page, it's a pretty nice landing page, pretty well executed. It has a nice image of the product. I have to uh, see different views of the product, to watch a video. The price is prominently displayed. It is, however, lacking an important element, the offer that compelled me to do my research. Where is the 90-day free trial? It's listed in tiny print below the Add to Cart button. So it, it, the, the, the thing that it actually drove me to go online, to go to that web page, is basically hidden. It's not in the headline. It's not in the subhead. So that whole idea of message match is lost. Thank you. It's a pretty poor effort for Bose. I got a relatively lackluster piece of mail. I had to go work really hard to find where to go online. When I got to the landing page, I didn't immediately see the offer that drove me there. Next case study from Johnson State College. 
my daughter uh, just finished her junior year of high school and, like a lot of kids, has found herself on mailing lists for many higher ed institutions. This recently arrived at our house, a nice, colorful, large postcard inviting her to attend the summer preview days at Johnson State College in Vermont. I really like the headline. It's pleasant, informative, tells me when this, these summer preview days are. First thing I see below the headline is a URL. Great job. They tell me where they want me to go online to learn more. They are redirecting me from Google, asking for information online there instead of online at Google. There's one problem, though. The URL is the homepage of Johnson State College. So I go to that URL, and now I'm lost. I was excited to learn more about the summer preview days in July. This homepage, like most homepages, is serving many masters. Unfortunately, the marketers who are promoting the summer preview days must be pretty low on the totem pole, because a quick scan of this page leaves me with nothing. Move on. Postcard over and get more information. Good. As I scan the postcard, my eyes are drawn to the sign up today in large font and in green. Immediately below that call to action, I see a URL, which happens to be a different URL than the one on the front of the card, as well as a number to call. Anything without her phone can type in the URL. Simple and easy. Her life would be easier if there were a QR code to scan, but the URL listed is what we'd call friendly. It's easy to read, easy to say, easy to type. When we go to that URL, what we get, though, is not really a landing page. It's a normal web page with all of the admissions events, all the normal navigation of the full Johnson State website. The good news is that I can find summer preview days, which is second on the list of special events displayed. The problem is that I counted 38 different links on this page, 38 different things that are asking me to take an action that has nothing to do with the reason why I came to this page, to learn more or to sign up for summer preview. Summer preview days gets lost in the shuffle. This page is so busy that in no way can anything stand out. The other thing, related to what we discussed earlier, imagine navigating this page on a phone, like my daughter does, with every single web page she ever looks at. All landing pages need to be built using responsive design, which will render the page to be thumb-friendly or keyboard-friendly, depending upon the screen being used. So here's an alternative for Johnson State College that we whipped up in less than five minutes. Which one do you think clearly communicates the offer? Which one makes Madeline feel that she's not just another number? Which one will render on a mobile device? Which one is more likely to entice my daughter to register? This is a really simple, stripped-down version of a landing page. There's no comparison to the URL listed on the postcard. And again, there are tools out there that make this simple and easy. It doesn't take a lot of time. It doesn't cost a lot of money. Johnson State could have a much, much higher rate of registration if they were to implement a simple landing page like this. Finally, uh, while we're on the topic of my kids, our final case study will be from another interesting solicitation. This time, a letter offering summer employment for my son. As you can see, this appears to be a personal letter from the district manager of this company called Vector. My son is personally addressed, indicating that variable print technology was used in the production. The call to action is clearly stated at the top of the letter in bold type. They want my son to call them now. 
But before my calls, my son called anyone, in fact, he much prefers to text than call, he wants to do a little bit of research. Since Ve Vector hasn't given him any direction, he turns to Vector's good friends at Google. As you can see, this is not a safe place for Vector. The second headline that Google has come up with for Vector summer jobs is, don't get suckered into their scam. VM is a bunch of con artists. Not exactly what the marketers at Vector had in mind when they reached out to Patrick. After seeing this, there's no way that my son gives Vector a call. The Vector story, though, is not yet complete. Shortly after receiving the letter from the district manager, my son received another letter from the same guy with the same offer. This time, the marketers at Vector included a personal URL for Pat to go to. It's patrickkelly38.vectorapply.com. It's a pretty simple URL. It's easy to type in. Again, there's no QR, but it's not the end of the world. Rather than seeing a page that says, don't get suckered into their scam, VM is a bunch of con artists, Pat sees the following. Here's a pretty well done page. While spare, it speaks to him directly with personalization techniques, gives some benefits from working for Vector, and gives him a pretty easy call to action. Just enter the zip code to begin finding him a job. It has images of happy teenagers about his age. This is what we would call a safe place for Vector. The marketers took a little more time to develop a direct mail landing page integration that gives Pat what he needs, but shields him from the mess that is out there on Google. So that's what we have for our presentation today. Uh, quick word on Boingnet. Uh, we are what we refer to as a lightweight marketing automation platform. We help businesses and agencies develop landing pages, microsites, email, text, and direct mail campaigns that can be integrated or standalone. We've got a lot of affordable, flex flexible options. And, of course, we're happy to talk to anybody anytime about all of these things. So, um, now it's time for some questions. Uh, what do we have that's come in, uh, Chaz? Sure. So, um, you mentioned a bit about personalization. Um, you know, and a uh, client here has a uh, mailer list, some with more information such as uh, names and others do not. Um, do you think it's worth the time to separate the list or just send them all one generic mailer? Well, if, if you've got data that is uh, that allows you to segment your list, you should definitely segment that for both your direct mail campaign and your landing page. And uh, the variable data print and variable data on landing pages enables you to personalize and to create uh, different experiences for different people. And so if you were to create a postcard that had an offer for a, uh, a Dairy Queen blizzard, uh, you could identify a group of people in a town and drive them to their closest Dairy Queen rather than a Dairy, dairy Queen in my town. And so, yeah, you should definitely use any data you have to segment and personalize uh, everything you're doing uh, online. Okay, great. Um, second one is, uh, what, what is the best follow-up after sending out a direct mail campaign? Uh, a lot of clients um, want to send a direct mailer out, the campaign goes out, and then it's basically over. So, so the, the next question uh, was, what's the best way to follow up on a direct mail campaign? Uh, and, and, and we think that uh, there's a new concept we've integrated into BoyNet called uh, drip campaigns. And what they allow you to do is to segment your list based upon the behavior of what has occurred in the campaign. And so uh, what you're able to do is, Rather than just blast out another direct mail campaign to everybody, 
you can send a different postcard or a different uh, mail letter out to people who didn't respond to the first one. You could send a, a, a different letter to people who did respond. And so by using that intelligence of who has responded, who has gone online, who has actually filled out the form and submitted, you can personalize your communications both through direct mail as well as email. And so, uh, again, thinking through how to take information from your data set and apply it to both the offline world through direct mail, the online world through landing pages, and then also through email, you're able to create a, a much more personalized, much more cost-effective campaign than if you just hit another a list another time with a full direct mail piece. So, um, Max, do we have any questions on uh, the hashtag? No, none yet. Okay. I'll uh, open up the floor to questions. Does anybody online have any questions for us? Okay, I guess not. Well, um, uh, like I said, I have one question. Oh. Okay, um, go ahead. We, if we signed up through email, will we get a um, a copy of the presentation? Yes. Through, you know, yes. Exactly. We're going to make a, a copy of the presentation available um, online. It will be recorded. And the uh, slides will also be available online for you to download. Oh, great. Good. Thank you. You're very welcome. Good presentation. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for carving out some time today. And we'll look forward to talking soon. Thank you, Dennis. Great, thanks.